All right, maybe I was just feeling a little bit ornery, or maybe it's because the conversation with my friend, and notice I use the word friend, this was a friend, so the conversation with the friend was maybe getting a little bit boring, and so what did I do? I brought up politics. There's nothing better right now to get a conversation going today than to bring up politics. And boy, right away, we were into it. You see, my friend has almost an exact opposite political view of things than I do. And yet, we're still friends, and the conversation was going along, but I was just getting more and more frustrated because my friend had just had like this, this tunnel vision. I mean, just this real limited view. And I'm trying to encourage him to take a look at the bigger picture and maybe look at it from a different angle and it absolutely not at all. Tunnel vision. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go check out in Merriam-Webster dictionary what is the definition of tunnel vision? Because I thought maybe my friend's name would be after tunnel vision. So I went and looked. And so this is what Marion Webster has to say of tunnel vision. Number one, constriction of the visual field resulting in the loss of peripheral vision. Okay, that's a picture of tunnel vision. But look at number two extreme narrowness of viewpoint. And they had this exact sentence as an example of number two. His tunnel vision made sensible discussions on political issues nearly impossible. All right, it didn't have my friend's name, but boy, what do you think of that description? His tunnel vision made sensible discussions on political issues nearly impossible nearly impossible and that's what the discussion was like but I think I was winning the discussion because at one point my friend decided to bring out the religion card and you know when he's trying to pull, push my buttons when he brings up the religious card and he was just saying to me there is no way as a Christian you could vote for that person what? And then he went into this justification on how his Christian faith was deciding for him how to vote. But that's not necessarily how my Christian faith was guiding me. So what is this religion card? Well, what I came to discover is, is while there is tunnel vision with politics, do you know that some people have tunnel vision when it comes to Jesus too. Let me give you a real example. So we have in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Okay, notice that. To go and suffer greatly, be killed, and on the third day be raised. And so what is this great full picture? I mean, what is seeing the whole picture? Suffering, death, resurrection. But unfortunately, Peter was suffering from tunnel vision. So we hear in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16 verse 22, then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. God forbid, Lord? Wait a minute, so what is Peter saying to Jesus? God forbid, Lord, that you not be raised from the dead. God forbid, Lord, that there not be a resurrection. You see, Peter had tunnel vision. And all he was focusing on was the suffering and the death. God forbid, Lord, we don't want you to suffer. We don't want you to die. But his tunnel vision was keeping him from seeing the bigger picture. It was keeping him from the whole picture. Suffering, death, and resurrection. And so when it comes to our faith in Jesus Christ, when it comes to our relationship with Jesus Christ, when it comes to our understanding of Jesus Christ, we need the whole picture, the whole picture. And I'm sorry, but we may not always get the whole picture, 
from some messages that we're hearing. There are some people that are using Jesus to support one political party. There are some people who are using Jesus to support the other political party. There are some people who use Jesus to support one race over another race. There are even people who use Jesus to support one sex over another sex. So that, of course, only one sex could be in any leadership roles in the church. I mean, we wouldn't even want to consider the other sex because, you know, Jesus, he only chose 12 men apostles. Well, excuse me, Let's not forget that St. Mary Magdalene was a woman and she's referred to as the apostle to the apostles. She witnessed, all right, we're not gonna get into the whole thing, but Jesus, get the whole picture, a whole picture. And the only way we're gonna do that is not just by listening to what others think of Jesus, because in reality, they might be suffering from tunnel vision, but going directly to the source developing a relationship with Jesus Christ, and it's not difficult to do. It's inviting Jesus, come into my life. Come enlighten my mind. Fill my heart, Lord. Help me to know you. For in knowing you, then I'm gonna get to know what is your will, what is perfect, what is pleasing to you, Lord. That's what St. Paul was talking about in his letter to verse two. Do not conform yourselves to this age. Notice that. Just don't conform yourselves to what you might be hearing from others. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect, what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect, and that's going to happen when we develop a relationship with Jesus, go directly to the source. Jesus, help us to truly see you as you are, to see the whole picture. And so I love what St. Paul says with the renewal of the mind, but I be careful with that one because too often I suffer from maybe mind games or rationalization. And so just because I might think I'm having these thoughts, I'm finding that just the mind alone, just this alone, isn't giving me the whole picture. Because I find that sometimes a relationship with Jesus goes beyond words, even beyond understanding. A relationship with Jesus is really here in my heart. So it's not just opening our minds, but opening our hearts for the whole picture. So as I was praying over these scripture readings, I've said before how I have this soundtrack that keeps going through my mind, going through my mind, going through my mind, and all that kept going through my mind was, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open my, the eyes of my heart. I mean, I absolutely love the song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, where we say, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Because our mind might be so caught up in the suffering. Our mind might be so caught up in death. Our mind might be leading to tunnel vision. But our heart our heart is going to see Jesus high and lifted up, to see Jesus in all his glory, to burst forth in the song, holy, holy, holy. Jesus will allow us through our heart to see the whole picture, which includes not just the suffering and the death, but the resurrection. So let us grow in our personal relationship with the Lord that he might enlighten our minds, but also fill our hearts with the whole picture to truly see the Lord for who he is, to truly see him in all his glory, to see not with just tunnel vision, but to see the whole picture.